heavy, heavy regulation is coming to the crypto space. That's gonna be the first nail in the coffin. So this is the predictions of Glenn and Cameron that in the next five years, we will see a wholesale collapse of the cryptocurrency market. It's going down. What's going on guys? I want to say thank you to the people who bought training. I want to say thank you to the people who are about to buy training and shout out to the nerd tribe. In this video, we're going to talk about the coming collapse of the crypto market. I'm going to give you a time frame. I believe that the crypto market will implode within the next five years. Now, what does that mean? Let's go ahead and walk through what I think is going to happen. Crypto is going to keep crashing. Crypto is 11 years old and doesn't have a very long track record. Crypto is going to keep crashing and the next crash, each time it crashes, especially in the current environment, more and more people are going to shy away from crypto. So that's the first nail in the coffin. FTX, Celsius, Voyager, all of these exchanges have recently collapsed. And this is going to spook a lot of people because who are the primary investors in cryptocurrency? People under the age of 35. That's the bulk of the investors. And these people, because when I was flirting around with doing day trading, I noticed that this same group of people, once they hit a bad set of trades, they would literally stop trading for a week, up to six months, up to a year. So even though this segment of the market is diehard crypto fans, and I will explain why, after two or three consecutive losses, a lot of them are gonna get out of crypto. Now let's talk about the segmentation of crypto. I believe between one and 5% of the investors of cryptocurrency are in it for the blockchain smart contracts. There is a group of people who are definitely into cryptocurrency for the technology. Now, 95 to 99% of the people in crypto are into it to make money. And this is what pulled people into the crypto. Oh, I bought some Bitcoin for, uh, you know, myself. I bought <clears throat> Bitcoin. Honestly, I wish I had bought more, but I spent maybe $10 on Bitcoin and seven years later, I was able to cash out at over 200,000. That right there is the number one reason that people are into crypto. That's it. They're, they're you know, once again, one to 5% are into it for the technology, the smart contracts, but the majority of people are into crypto for the exchange of wealth. Let's talk about my favorite crypto whooping boy, Carl Rumfeld, who recently put up a video talking about he has the American Express black card. I am an American Express card holder. I have an American Express account rep. I have spent $165,000, $170,000 this year on American Express. And I had some conversations with my account rep. The only way you're going to get the American Express black card is multiple years of high spend. You're not going to get the American Express black card based upon what's in your bank. And think about it from American Express point of view. Let's say you have someone who has a net worth of $100 million, but they don't really spend a lot of money. Why would American Express give them a black card? The black card is exclusively designed for people with high spend. That's it. So his whole reason of, I'm going somewhere with this, his whole reason of how he got the American Express black card based upon his crypto holdings is 100% false. Now, this is another reason. There's a lot of lies and scams in the crypto space. And this is one of the reasons I bring up Carl Renfield, who in 2018 was bagging groceries. And literally four years later, he's a billionaire. It's a great story for the weak, the feminine, for the people who don't want to do work. Oh man, I could buy some crypto and become a billionaire in four years. It, it's, a, it's a very appealing story 
to that under 30 segment of investors who are investing in cryptocurrency. Now that segment after consecutive losses, because right now there are many crypto channels, there are stock channels who are talking about buying on the dip. I've seen numerous channels talk about that this is your chance to get wealthy in the future because stocks are on sale, crypto's on sale. I'm about to give you some researchable facts. During the dot-com bust, there were companies that are still in business that have not reached their former all-time stock highs. Now, the Apples and the Amazon, these are companies that have a lot of revenue. They will probably bounce back. But all of these stocks that are depressed right now, especially the ones with funky financials, uh, some of them are not coming back. So there's a guy, Joseph Hogue, uh, Bowtie Nation. He has given his subscribers, in my opinion, some very good advice. He said, do not buy on the dip. What you need to do is consistently add money to your brokerage account. When the time is right to buy, you will be ready. I found I feel that is sane, sound advice. But Joseph Hogue is he looks to be a 40 something year old man who's been around the block a few times. This segment of people, these especially these YouTubers and crypto channels, the majority of them are under 30, which means they came of age during this 11 year bull run. That's all they know. That's all they know. They don't know anything else. However, there are stocks that collapsed during the dot-com bust that have not returned to their former high, uh, high stock price highs. There have been periods in the stock market history where there have been prolonged downturns. We've had two years of the stock market being down. 2023 will be the third year. Now, after, once again, looking at this core group of people under 30, these investors, they're not really durable. They don't have these diamond hands that everyone keeps talking about. Because after consecutive losses, because I'm here to tell you, Bitcoin, Ethereum, crypto, it's going to crash even further. It's going to go lower. And this is going to spook. I saw a video by a YouTuber who uh, said he's done with cryptocurrency. And after multiple crashes, a lot of these young investors are coming out of crypto. That's going to be the first nail in the coffin. That's going to be the first nail in the coffin. These investors fleeing crypto, these the scams, the lies, the collapse of the exchanges, all of the pump and dump schemes. This is going to drive a lot of people out of the crypto space. That's the first nail. The second nail, regulation is coming. I know that people want a decentralized currency, but but here's the thing. Why do we have so many liars, scams, and collapsed projects in the crypto space? Because it's unregulated. So with the collapse of Celsius, Voyager, FTX, heavy, heavy regulation is coming to the crypto space, which is going to tarnish, it's going to remove some of the allure some of the draw to the crypto spaces because what's going to happen is government regulation is coming heavy government regulation is coming around the world to the crypto space i believe it was argentina or el salvador one of these countries that adopted bitcoin and they bought bitcoin at the high and it crashed how's that working out for them now so that's going to be the second nail in the coffin the third nail in the coffin is there will be government issued crypto it's just a matter of time before government issued crypto comes it's going to be now government it's going to be united states it's going to be europe it's going to be china it's going to be japan well maybe not china maybe japan uh, Germany, UK, these governments are going to start issuing their own cryptocurrency. So you will have regulation and you will have a government backed cryptocurrency. Now, there was a crypto uh, YouTuber, Crypto Casey, who made the case that a lot of government backed stuff doesn't work. All right. Um, what is this? 
What's that? That's cash, right? That is a government backed project. Um, does your cash work whenever you want it to work? Yes. You could go out. I can give you a hundred dollars and you can use a hundred dollars at virtually a million spots on the planet. That's a government issued, government backed project that's working extremely well. So crypto Casey, uh, when it comes to money and the issuing and creating the money, that's something that the governments do quite well. And this cryptocurrency that the governments will issue are going to be, it's going to work just as well as cash. Cause it, you know, it has to, it has to, let's say if it was hard to use cash, the cash was clunky, it wouldn't work. A lot of people wouldn't want, I can go to Mexico and use that hundred dollars in Mexico. I can pull it out at a street vendor and then he's like, ah, I'll take your cash. So crypto Casey, I don't know what you're talking about because when it comes to currency, cash, financials, that works very well, works extremely well. So that's going to be the third nail in the coffin. The fourth nail in the coffin. What's going to happen with cryptocurrency? Is decentral, decentralized cryptocurrency going to disappear? No, it's not. Decentralized cryptocurrency. We have what's called the primary market, which is when you go to the mall, you go to the grocery store, you buy something on Amazon, you buy something from Apple. That's the primary market. That's you know when the consumers buy something from a merchant or business. The secondary market. Craigslist, when people buy stuff on Craigslist. Uh, that's the secondary market. And then the third market, the underground economy or the criminal economy. This is where decentralized cryptocurrency is going to run. You're going to have a bunch of people, especially criminals. Uh, why? A criminal wants a currency that cannot be traced. They want a currency that cannot be stopped. At the moment, Due to government regulations, like let's say you have a criminal on enterprise. Let's go Omni and the Hellcat. What did the government do? They froze his accounts. See, this is why decentralized cryptocurrency is going to move to the criminal underground economy. It's not going to disappear because it's, it's going to have a very use case specific for criminals and people who want to do illicit activities, drug dealers. So that's where decent, it's not going to disappear, but it's going to move primarily to that third underground economy. That's where it's going to hang out. That's where you're going to see uh, the bulk of cryptocurrency. So the first nail, the collapse of cryptocurrency is going to spook a lot of these young investors. Uh, I actually reached out to some of my wealthy friends and you know, age ranges from 45 to 84. And I noticed something, the older and richer they were, the less they cared about cryptocurrency. Here's the thing, you're making millions of dollars, you live in a mansion, you drive an exotic, you take a vacation, you do it. You're not thirsty for cryptocurrency. You're already wealthy. And what I've noticed is I did have some friends, younger friends who were indeed involved in cryptocurrency. And I have one friend who actually, and this caused a rift between him and his wife. His wife told him, do not invest our money in cryptocurrency. He did it anyway. And he lost, he was in the Luna. He lost close to half a million dollars. And his wife has been pissed at him. They've been fighting. And he said, you know, we may be on the verge of divorce. So that's where, once again, take that situation. Uh, he's 42. He has a business. He makes a lot of money. And I remember when he was talking about cryptocurrency and I was just like, I'm not messing with it. I bought some Bitcoin. I cashed out. I'm going to leave it alone. And he went ahead. He went real hard with it and he lost a lot of money. So that, that, that first use case, a pain. When people start to feel pain over and over and over, they're gonna jump out the crypto space. Number two, regulation. Regulation, regulation is gonna drive a lot. And some of these, and that one to 5% purists, those technocrats in the crypto space, 
government regulation is going to drive a lot of them out to space because that's a big tenant to what they believe. They don't want any regulations. They don't want any centralization. They want a completely pure and free currency. So government regulation is going to drive a lot of them out. Then nail number three, when, not if, but when the government start issuing their own cryptocurrency. That's going to be another nail because I know that many of you like you're a boomer. You don't understand how cryptocurrency works. Actually, I understand that for cryptocurrency to continue to go up, you need adaptation. You need more and more people buying cryptocurrency. And it is my prediction within the next five years, you're going to see the other collapse of most cryptocurrency and it's going to move to the criminal segment of society. Because here's the thing. And I want you and I'm, I want you to think about this from this standpoint. You're married and your wife has cheated on you one time. For most men, that's something they can forgive. They can work it out. They can forgive her and keep the marriage intact. But say your wife cheats on you five times. Are you going to stay with her? So every time that cryptocurrency collapses, that is like your wife cheating on you. Like if it happened once, not, you know, it's a big deal. It's a problem, but we can get through it. But she cheats on you five times. Are you going to stick with her? The average man is not going to stick with a woman that's cheated on them five times. It's just not going to happen. So each time that cryptocurrency crashes like that, that's like cryptocurrency has cheated on you. And there's only so many times that cryptocurrency can cheat on you and you're going to stick with it. There's only so many times. And, you know, uh, yes, I'm a boomer. But one of the things I understand is how to create value, how to create products, how to create services and make money. This is something that most of you don't know how to do. You could drop me in New York City with my skill sets and I can make money. I can make a million dollar business in less than a year in New York City. Can you? And that, that that's the whole thing, because with everything that is going on in the world today, I look at the number of people who are wholesale sold on cryptocurrency. And these people don't have any remarkable skill sets. They don't have any unique abilities. So going back to once again, that one to five percent that are in cryptocurrency for the technology, the smart contracts. I give you that those people are there, but the lying share of people who are in cryptocurrency are in it for a money grab. And that's going to be the thing that's going to collapse cryptocurrency when that money grab factor keeps disappearing. Each time cryptocurrency crashes, the money grab factor gets smaller and smaller. And that's what's going to drive a lot of people out of crypto. And why do I say crypto is going to collapse? All right. For crypto, and I've said this before, for crypto to keep going up in price needs widespread adaptation. For crypto, and this is one of the things, crypto doesn't have a fundamental underlying value. Now, there were many people who would disagree with me. It's like, well, cryptocurrency to mint, um, what's this, to mine a block requires X amount of electricity and they base the value of cryptocurrency on that. Okay. Cryptocurrency at the moment doesn't have utility. Let's compare cryptocurrency, the mining of cryptocurrency to the production of a car. Let's say it costs GM $20,000 to create this car that they turn sell for 27,000. When you buy that car, that car has the ability to get you from point A to point B. That's the utility. And there's many segments in the car market. There's point A to point B. And then there's the exotic car market and there's the luxury car market. All every car does the same thing. It gets you from point A to point B. But based upon the segment you're in, I'm in the segment where I like faster cars and I am willing to pay an exorbitant premium for faster cars because my new Porsche, I love it. I love it. It's faster than the old one and it's fun. And, and this is something else too. I get a lot of attention in that car. I did not get nowhere near as much attention in the red Porsche, but this Porsche, literally I've had people stop me 
or ask about the Porsche or yell at me while I'm driving with the top down. So this Porsche gets a lot of attention because everyone that sees that car knows what it is and they know how much it costs and they know how privilege I, I must be to have one. You cannot be making $30,000 a year and get this car. Shoot, you could not even be making 100K a year and get this car. You can't do it. So the use case of GM, Porsche, Volkswagen, BMW, Mercedes, they produce these cars and they sell them to us, the public, because there's a valid use case scenario. And also with Porsche, and I can tell you, I've seen it. There's this uh, auction site, bring a trailer. If I don't put a lot of miles on this Porsche, 20 years in the future, I can sell this Porsche for more than what I paid for it. I have seen it over and over again. So there's an intrinsic value and there is, depending on how it's used, you know, cause I've had the car two months. I just hit a thousand miles in two months. And I literally, I'm in it every day, but once again, I don't have to drive that far. And I also have another vehicle. So once again, what's the use case for cryptocurrency? What is the point A to point B use case for cryptocurrency? There isn't one. Cryptocurrency value is based on what people think it's worth. And as long as more people pile into cryptocurrency, as long as institutions pile in the cryptocurrency the value keeps going up but with all of these crashes institutions are going to I, I don't know about that and as people pull back from cryptocurrency as less people buy cryptocurrency it's going to collapse so that's the first nail in the coffin and all of you I'm about to say something. Most of you who come at me in the comments are broke. And I find it beyond hilarious that a bunch of broke under 30 or 30 some year old men are harassing a millionaire. You think you're so smart because you actually, and I'm about to say something that's going to get many of you in the defensive position. When I bought my cryptocurrency, my Bitcoin and sold it, I got lucky. It wasn't skill. It wasn't knowledge. It wasn't, you know, learning about cryptocurrency. I bought it at the right time and I got lucky. Guess what? The majority of you who made money with cryptocurrency got lucky and your luck's about to run out. See, during this crypto winter and during, uh, once again, there are people who are making a lot of money with cryptocurrency right now. And there are people who are making a lot of money in the stock market right now. But these are skilled technicians. These are not people who got lucky. These are people with a lot of money and a lot of skill and a lot of data. So for everyone who bought crypto at the right time and sold it at the right time, congratulations, you got lucky, you got lucky. But the luck's about to run out because now we're in a real marketplace where real skilled technicians are gonna make the money while everyone else is about to take these L's, about to take these L's. So this is my prediction. I know Kathy Woods thinks that cryptocurrency, Bitcoin is going to be worth 250,000 in 2030. I predict by 2018, 2028, that we will see the wholesale collapse of the crypto market. Wholesale, wholesale collapse of the crypto market, because once we get into a situation where it, and then once again, in 2023, Bitcoin and cryptocurrency is gonna crash again. And that's gonna drive so many people out the market. Cause right now, all of these crypto channels, all of these stock channels that are talking about buy on the dip. I've seen a lot of very young, purported YouTube millionaires talking about, this is your chance to get rich. This is your chance to buy these stocks and to buy these cryptocurrency because the price is depressed. And once things return to normal, it's going to zoom up. My prediction is that 2023 will be another down year for the stock market, will be another down year for cryptocurrency, and it's gonna be another down year for the adaptation of cryptocurrency. Because I based my analysis, Richard Fain bought Tesla, and this is when I was 
messing around with, you know, starting to be traded. I was going to short Tesla. I never went through with my um, plans on trading because I did some opportunity cost analysis. I have a unique skill set. I know how to market and create online courses, something I've been doing for almost 10 years. So I'm going to leave that skill set to go over here and learn this new skill set that argumentally could take me two to five years to learn. That would be stupid on my part when I can go ahead and use a defined and scalable skill set that I already have and make millions of dollars versus flirting around with trading. Makes no sense to me. And that's why I didn't do it because of the huge, huge opportunity cost, huge, huge opportunity cost. Like I said, I have unique skill sets, unique credible things I can do that make money. So it doesn't make sense for me to go over here and start trading because if you've noticed, the content on this channel has changed. And I'm not really posting any more on my other channels because those videos, because let me go ahead and tell you the plan. The plan is that 2023, everything that I put out would be an edited video. I'm going to shoot in 4K and I'm going to lean in to my established skill set that I already have versus chasing after something. Because, you know, I, I'm, I'm human. I get a little salty when I see that some 20 year old comes on YouTube talking about trading Forex and next thing you know, they have 100,000 subscribers. They're getting half a million views. Since it's a channel in the financial space, whether it's business, credit or stocks, I already know that this channel that only gets 500 is making $15,000 a month in AdSense. And I'm just sitting here like, I'm not making that kind of money from AdSense. And then and I will be very, very, um, I feel my content's better. You want to know why? Because my content's actionable. You can actually use this stuff to make money. So, but I'm, I'm about to lean in, double down and stick to the things that I know and operate within my wheelhouse. So this is the predictions of Glendon Cameron that in the next five years, we will see a wholesale collapse of the cryptocurrency market. It's going down. It's going down.